What's up folks, Nate here at 2Wheel Dyno Works. I am back on the dyno today with our new 2025 Yamaha R3. And today we're doing some slip-on exhaust testing and tuning. I've got on the bike the Grave slip-on for the Yamaha R3 and it looks and sounds fantastic in comparison to the stock muffler. Now, some of you may notice there's a little kind of guard or heat shield missing there at the bottom of that slip-on. They've actually redeveloped that for the 2025 models because the fitment is different than it was for the 2024 models. I just don't have that here with me right now. So if you see that missing, that's why. So let's really quickly dive into what this actually does for your bike in terms of performance. And as always, before we dive into how the bike performs now, let's just quickly recap how it performed stock and what we were able to accomplish with the stock exhaust system still in place with proper tuning. So we have a more accurate baseline of where we're starting from versus where we're at now. This is how our R3 performed bone stock. 36 horsepower, 19 and a quarter pound feet of torque to the tire on pump gas. And with our custom tuning in place for the stock exhaust system, there are some very small gains down here through the mid-range, but the big over-rev here that we are able to unlock on these bikes is really the story to tell. There also is a noticeable gain right there at about 11,000 RPM in terms of performance, but it's not a life-changing difference on these bikes with the stock exhaust system still in place. Now, once you install the slip-on, however, things start to get a little, uh, interesting. The red line there is still the bike in bone stock configuration. The blue line is with the Grave slip-on installed. And just looking at that graph, you go, oh cool, just a little bit of free horsepower, but it doesn't really change much at all. So it probably won't need any tuning, right? Wrong. These updated 2025 R3 ECUs are nothing like the old ones. I already covered that in our first video about talking about the stock tuning, but truly you see it when you throw a slip-on on the bike. Because all of a sudden, the air-fuel ratios go completely haywire when you put a much more open muffler on these bikes versus the stock slip-on. This is what I'm talking about, folks. The bottom graph there is the air fuel chart, and at wide open throttle, right as the bike's coming on to peak torque, it's at 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio, which is pretty much exactly 15% too lean. That is lean enough that it's still making pretty decent power, but it's also on what we call the spicier side of peak, meaning that when you're going to run into things like detonation, that's where it occurs, right about that 14.7 to 1 AFR wide open throttle range, which means that throwing a slip on on this bike without proper tuning, not from a power standpoint, but from a safety standpoint, is objectively a bad idea. Now, a lot of people looking at that AFR chart are probably going, holy shit, that's nuts. It's just a slip-on. It shouldn't make that big of a difference. The bike has O2 sensors. Why isn't it trimming? I have explained more times than I can count that the narrowband O2 sensors that are used on almost every single modern motorcycle are the same narrowband O2 sensor technology that the automotive industry abandoned over 20 years ago. They are not capable of making any sort of accurate fuel trim, especially anywhere past very light throttle and low RPM ranges. And this huge diameter change in the muffler does not only affect wide open throttle. In fact, things are even worse at light throttle. As you can see there in that quick clip I just showed you that I filmed earlier of the bike with just a slip-on installed, the stock mapping in place at light throttle where the O2 sensors should be trimming the fueling, they're not. You're still in the low 15 to 1 range when you're just cruising around, which just makes the thing runs like crap, it's kind of chuggy, and it runs super hot. But what's probably even more surprising than all of that to many folks watching this video is once you do get the fueling back down to reality, get the proper ignition timing in place, obviously the big rev extension that we can do on these bikes, you're still not gaining much with just a slip-on exhaust. Yeah, there's some spots here where it was just stupidly lean where yeah, you're picking up a decent amount of power there. It's only like one or two horsepower, but on a bike that's only making 37 horsepower, that's actually a very noticeable difference. But at peak, you're talking about a whopping one horsepower. It is not a dramatic change, even when you get the AFRs back to reality, the thing just won't run stupidly hot anymore and run the risk of damaging itself. So even with a slip-on and proper ECU mapping to match, you're not going to gain a ton of performance. But if you just throw the slip-on on there and think that the fueling is going to be safe for that on how leaned out and restricted these new 2025 R3 ECUs are, you're dead wrong. It will run super lean and super hot and it will not be a happy running engine. And for those of you that want to see the graphs all overlaid on top of each other, there it is. The blue line is how it was bone stock, the green line was stock with our custom tuning in place, and the red line, which is obviously the most out of any of them so far, is with the Grave slip-on installed and our custom ECU mapping to match the new airflow characteristics of that pipe. 
Now, even on the older generation R3s, our personal recommendation was always to go ahead and install a full exhaust system, not just a slip-on. They left a lot of power on the table. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and get a full system installed, go ahead and build our custom ECU mapping for that, and we'll show you the performance differences there, because they are much more substantial when you get the ridiculously restrictive header and catalytic converter assembly out of the way than just putting a slip-on on these bikes. But in the meantime, if you are looking to get your new Yamaha R3 ECU flashed, look no further than TwoWheelDynoWorks.com. I can guarantee that you're not going to find higher quality intake and exhaust specific ECU mapping anywhere else on the planet for these new bikes than right here at Two Wheel Dyno Works. And if you have any questions whatsoever about intake mods, exhaust mods, tuning, anything for your new 25R3, please do not hesitate to email us at support at TwoWheelDynoWorks.com. I personally answer any and all tech support questions every single day here at the shop that we are open, and we are truly Always happy to help.